Welcome back everyone, Deadly Sumo K here, and as you guys wanted me to from the guild and just a few other people commenting, we're going to be reviewing the remake. Uh, some of you guys do know this, others of you who do not have a Facebook or don't know the more beer um, more beer um, yeah I think that's how you say it, we are having a 7 night remake. And for those of you who are Spike lovers, Spike is not getting a remake, but he will be getting his revamp pretty soon though. Reason is because he's already as overpowered as he is, honestly if you guys understand this, he has freeze, he has block rate, and his freezing is much stronger than what Jay's burn is about to become. Spoiler. And his freezes are great because practically once they get unthawed out, they're practically dead just because of how much damage his freeze does. So, developer Wukong, pretty nice guy. Rudy's remake, his is not so big. We got Rudy, his uh, defense will be 60% still. But now, every hit he receives, it will be block. So that's great. Pretty good, but still not great. His rush attack inflicts 80... In, yeah, yeah, my English. Inflicts 80% physical damage on one enemy three times instead of one. So it will get rid of void shields. Help when you're facing a Lubu or something. And stuns enemy for two turns. Guaranteed, obviously. And, and also decreases buff durations by three turns. Defense preparation does the exact same thing, and then, now, you guys don't need to know this, but I will leave a link in the description for these two posts just so you guys can read them yourselves. Now, Delans. Delans is going to be extremely overpowered. I I predict, as well as others predicted, Delans and Jave are going to definitely be in the new meta. And some four lords might be disappearing. Gip and Tail might be taken out for a little while. Delans, he's now immune to damage for four hits. Not four turns like people thought, it's four hits. It's just like Lubu, instead of six, he has four. He now increases all allies' damage, whether it be physical or magic, by 50%. And every hit he does, speed wise or a counter, his cooldown for each move he uses is by seven seconds. That is amazing. So that's why this Tuesday, I'm definitely grabbing myself a Delans and I'm going to start uh, working on him. I'm going to have a Javen Dillon's team just destroy the meta. <laughs> well, I hope. So, for those of you who did not invest on Jave, well, sucks to be you. But, you can definitely work on your Jave right now and go and grab a level 3 Jave, your next selector. If you're not, uh, if not, go and grab your Dillon's. You'll see how OP Jave is in a little bit. Dillon's Deadly Strike, 80 second, not much of a difference, probably making it worse than what it originally was. Inflicts 110 physical damage on one enemy three times, additional piercing, but then this time they added back the Ignorous Enemy's defense. That is good. So, still pretty good damage. <clears throat> Advent Grim Reaper, bullshit, and this, was what, this is what's going to ruin meta. 100 physical damage on all enemies, silences one or more, pretty much meaning it's going to silence everybody. Not really. Probably like, I'd say, 70% chance to stun a target for two turns. And that's what sucks. Chris. Chris has been better and also worse. So, as normal, 30% of HP to all allies every time he dies. Dies as a zombie, three turn. This time, as I've been waiting for, he will have a depth debuff with each basic attack. So, say he has speed attack, he hits somebody. There is roughly about a 50% chance that they will be added into a death debuff. That applies to counter rate and, as I said earlier, speed rate. Strike of Darkness. 150 physical damage on one enemy twice. So then again, lowers down a void shield. Such as Lubu, Sogyo, uh, Teo, Gipring, etc. Whisper of Darkness. This one was, in my opinion, weakened. Yeah, it does 200 physical damage on three enemies, but it used to be five enemies, and that's why I miss. It would, they would have had Chris be a lot stronger if they kept it to uh, five. And death to buff as well. Same with the first and second. So, now we can go ahead and look at the second one. We have uh, Jay, Rachel, and another one. What's the other one? Eileen. So, Jay... This time, instead of 40% reflect, he now has 50%, making himself once again better than what Naza is. So instead of 40, now it's 50, so your Jave can be even more tankier. Mine's going to be an absolute brick wall with that 7k HP. It'll take a while to die. 
and now he's finally received the passive of immune to all debuffs for three turns, which is what I was extremely waiting for, because I'm sick and tired of my Jade being stunned, paralyzed, or whatever, by Gip Ring, Eileen, whatever. I hated that. It really annoyed me. Now, this is what makes a big difference. Fury Strike. 60 physical damage on all enemies two times. Used to be just 100 physical damage. This time, it also decreases, no, increases your damage of Jave by 20% for each time an enemy dies. His damage will increase by 20% each time he kills an enemy with this move. That's pretty great. Uh, that's going to make him even a tank and a serious damage dealer. Wait till he sees Dragon Fury. Remember guys, these cooldowns are only 70 seconds. <coughs> Inflicts 120 physical damage, not 100. He also ignores the enemy's defense as well as a piercing being included. He will do, and I repeat, he will do a shit ton of damage to your team. Whether you have a void shield or not. Hit shield, yeah, so other people can take care of it. But he will also apply a 200% burn. Yeah, a 200% burn. Before the vamp, the first vamp, when Seven Nights first came out, Jave only had 100% burn. And they took that out. Now he has a 200% burn. He is going to destroy the meta. For those of you who are going to uh, say no, well, we'll see about that because I believe he will. Read all about this. I'll put the links in the description. Eileen, she kind of had a little bit of a uh, buff, but same passive. This time, Thunder Lord's Fury, 120 physical damage on one enemy twice. Practically 240 physical damage. Applies piercing and crit will take effect all the time. So that will help in Castle Rush as well. And inflicts an electri electrifies the enemy no matter what for two turns. That'll be a little annoying in Arena. Celestial so Bolt, a little bit of vamped. Cooldown is now 80 seconds. Don't know what it was, guys. If you guys could tell me in the comments what it was previously, I'm too lazy to look. So <laughs> then we have inflicts 70 physical damage on all enemies two times. So technically 140 physical damage. And, made, and then, as usual, Two turns of Electrify. Rachel. And I hate people who are like, When is Rachel going to be used for Arena or PvP? If you have Rachel have a four person target of Phoenix, that's stupid. You guys are stupid for thinking that. Why would she be able to decrease your attack and defense by 80% on four of your five heroes? That is stupid. That would destroy everything and that would just ruin the point of the game. Rachel would just be the one to be used all the time. That's stupid, so no. Passive the same, Blaze, inflicts 250 physical damage on one enemy, additionally ignores enemy's defense, and crit hey, crit will be applied all the time. So now she'll be doing much more damage in Castle Rush, so that will help us out in Castle Rush, preferably easy mode. <clears throat> Phoenix, cooldown 70... Man, they're changing cooldowns for quite a bit. Inflicts 200 physical damage on three enemies, additionally decreases the enemy's damage and defense by 80% for two turns, burns the enemy, enemies with 300 of physical attack for two turns. That is pretty freaking good. And that's a three person target too. So I expect seeing lower levels using uh, her in arena for sure. Definitely not in high arena. So those were the remakes guys. Fast little cover on it. Oh, so they increased, the, that's dumb. They increased the, oh no, this is after, uh, when she revives, okay. That's cool. So yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this. It was a short little cover on the revamp. Not much of you guys asked for it, but I thought it'd be a good idea to go and bring it up. So I did bring it up. Here you go, guys. Hopefully, hopefully you guys did like it, get a better idea of it. I predict this to be released on uh, 15s. Either the 17th, 18th, or sometime the week after. Probably going to be the week after. The frickin' day I start school, and then I'll hate my life, and still hate my life, because I'll be back at school, and then I'll just hate my life, and I'm starting to get depressed because I'm starting to think about school. Not literally depressed, but you guys get what I mean, but I got a week and a half to enjoy my summer still, or kind of hard to when you got a job and you're working almost every single day, but it's money, and money talks, so thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Uh, keep, yeah. 
our subscribers have been rising pretty freaking high. So you guys are doing a great job on that. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, as you guys can probably tell, I, haven't gotten, I have gotten more confident in my videos for commentary. Um, I am more talkative. I do talk more. I don't sit there and pause for like 10 seconds, act like I'm doing something, and then <laughs> say, all right, I'm done, and then leave. But yeah, you guys get what I mean. So that's cool. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.